And I guess I'll go ahead and just start talking about the first session. All right, so technically that was the intro session, but I'm actually calling the next session, session zero, where you're actually starting to set up for the uh, interactive portion. But before all of that, uh, you know, let's do, th do things, places. I'd like to actually thank uh, NeuroNexus, a NeuroNex Innovation Award, who actually has made this entire workshop possible. Um, it's really a great pleasure to like, you know, be able to do this kind of workshop, and without their support, this wouldn't be possible. So. All right, so session zero is entitled Getting Connected. I'm not necessarily talking about getting connected to each other, I'm talking about getting connected to our work database. So here's my simple instructions of what you have to do, and I'll have this up for a while, and then I would like you to follow it. So first thing first, what you have to do is go visit the datajoin.io slash workshop uh, website. Uh, once you visit it, and I'll, I'll show you uh, shortly, you will be in, uh, met with two boxes to fill in. One says email, and one says something along the line of workshop code. And this is just to make sure that people who just you know, don't happen to wander around and start like hammering our resources. So you just have to enter this super cryptic Neuronext 2018 code to get yourself the access. That will prompt you to connect to your GitHub account. This is something I've included in the email. I hope that you had a chance to create a GitHub account. If you haven't had a chance to do so, no worries. This is a good time for you to go ahead and create a GitHub account. What this allows us to do is kind of identify you based on your GitHub account and make the rest of the process pretty straightforward. So I'll wait a couple more minutes and then also go ahead and do it. And also, by the way, if you sign up, you should also be receiving an email to the email the address you provided. The email will contain instructions, well, specifically your username and password. The username is going to end up becoming the same thing as your GitHub username. Password is critical. That will be a very cryptic string that you will use, at least for this very first session, to get connected to our database server. Uh, one more bonus feature that comes with the email is this link to, like it says, like, click here to connect to Slack. For those of you who are not familiar with Slack, it's basically a chatting platform. And this is kind of our way of having uh, online support during the workshops. So while you're obviously more than welcome to just ask me questions by raising your hand and just calling out for help, uh, you can also go ahead and get onto Slack and type away your questions. We have a dedicated Neuronext workshop channel. So if you go there and ask questions, in general, some of us, uh, most likely not me since I wouldn't be attending to the Slack, but the rest of the, our team and some even not present here will like, you know, secretly appear and start answering your questions and solve every problem you encounter. At least that's the expectation. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and demo this a bit. So if you would have uh, went to Data Join IO Workshop, you should see something like this. Yeah, you type in your address and your key code, which is near next 2018. If you sign up, uh, it probably, yeah, it doesn't do it for me since I already went through the process. But for the first timer, it would have prompted you to accept getting connected to this like, GitHub application. This should say something along the line of data joint. You're more than, you should be safe to completely accept that. We don't try to take any information away from you. And you do it twice, one to sign up and get the database connection, and second time is when you actually visit. So this might not be the exact screen that you encounter. It might say something like get connected or start the server or something along that line. All right, so let me give a bit of overview of what is that you're seeing. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Jupyter Notebook, this is basically an interactive environment to work with Python. So basically what's happening is that we are hosting this whole environment in one of our own servers that's pre-configured, all connected to the database, or at least have all the necessary uh, configurations for the database as, long as, as well as resources. So you don't have to burden yourself setting up a whole Python environment, the whole packages of the data joined and whatnot, and still have all the fun of the workshop. Now, if you're interested to know how is it that you can set things up like this on your local machine, which is totally possible, or you just want to have a, your local development environment, you come talk to me after the workshop today. The, this is my way of basically providing a uniform environment so we can worry less about setting things up and wor work more on working and learning data joint. So the vast majority of things will take place if you go to your work folder. 
here are a couple of notebooks. So the, in Jupyter terminology, there are these notebooks. And if you, let's actually go ahead and click one of them. I already have one click. It's, so if you cl uh, click on one called 00, zero connecting to database, all right, so what you're seeing is like a Jupyter notebook environment. So this is like a pretty neat environment where you can combine documentation and writings with real code. So just you know, a quick intro to you so you can actually follow along. Most of the, basically pretty much everything today will be happening in one of these Jupyter notebook environment. You will start with the notebook I provide you with. Uh, there are many things pre-filled. There will also be things that's not completely pre-filled, so you can be typing and you know, learn to work with data joint. But the first and foremost, you have to learn how to run a cell. So each and every one of these. If you kind of go over, you can see you can click on many of these things. These are called cells. And for those that looks like a code, like this one, for example, you should be seeing exactly this one, go ahead, click on it. The way you want to run it is by hitting a couple of choices. You can either uh, select the cell and hit run that's up here. That will run that cell. Uh, if you're a keyboard nerd like me, you probably prefer to know the fact you can put shift enter. And if you did shift enter, it will run that code and move to the next cell. So go ahead, import the data join package. This is where I'm already kind of getting ahead of myself, but at least having you try and get a feel of how the notebook works. All right, so for all those else who has successfully had connected, went to the page and try out the shift enter thing and everything seems to be working, uh, this is probably a perfect time for you to take a bit of break, grab some coffee, and uh, let's actually adjourn back in uh, 10 minutes. All right, so uh, I'll recap the process again. So once you are entirely connected to the Jupyter Hub, uh, basically, you should, like after you push every green button so you can, can see in your field, eventually you should get somewhere here, right? So you see public versus work. You're here to do work, so you click on work. That takes you to uh, inside the folder, and you see a bunch of notebooks like this, right? If you click on 00, zero connecting to database, well, that is, the da that is the notebook you would like to use for this very zeroth session. Right, so we're a proper Pythonista, so we start counting from zero. All right, so again, just to recap, basically this is a notebook environment that gives you both text and you know, environment to run your code, and I just figured this is probably the easiest way for everyone to run the same thing, but still give you flexibility to experiment around. So the general rule that's like whenever you see a code block or coding cell like this, you click on it, or you can actually navigate ups and downs there's some tricks to it, but if you, you can click on it, and if you either hit the run, or if you hit shift enter, it runs it. And for most things, it's fine to run as many times as you like, you know. It's pretty forgiving. Now, in the, some of the upcoming ones, I usually provide you space, but say you really want to try things out, uh, one of the best things to do is to create some cells in addition. So if you hit this plus, it creates a new cell below. And here you're really free to type in new code, whatever you want, you know, and run it. Okay, so this first session is about getting connected. So I mean, I kind of intentionally took this session to be fairly long just to make sure everyone has a chance to get connected. We're kind of already ahead. So I think I'll just take advantage of that and kind of get started and move forward. And that gives us more time to just play around a bit and experiment because this is what this interactive workshop is all about. So, and the first thing first, I just want to uh, you know, cover some basics. Uh, if you're not already familiar with, the Python, Python is all about not just what it comes with, but a lot of the external packages provided by third party. Basically, like a lot of people out there build new packages, like put their own code in, package it up, and make it publicly available for the rest of us to use and do computations or whatever you actually want to do with. This is what actually makes Python one of the, like, great environments to work with because if you can imagine something, usually there's a package for it. Or at least, at least there should be usually some packages that you can then combine to come up with your own solution, which you might eventually decide to make it its own package, just like we did for data joint. So data joint following this tradition is a proper package. This whole environment comes with pretty much any kind of scientific like, common tools for Python that you can imagine, or at least the very common ones. So it comes with NumPy, it comes with SciPy, 
and also comes, of course, with the plotting library matplotlib, and, you know, of course, data joint. So what you already have done by running the first was to import data joint and alias it as DJ, which is what the com convention we adapted, and just like many other packages, like cool packages have some conventions and aliases, we decided, well, we'll follow it, it's DJ. All right, so we have successfully imported it, but what you haven't done yet is connect the data joint to anything. Like currently, you just import a data joint, you're kind of ready, start ready, like you're ready to start working with it, but you really haven't told data joint like, okay, what to do. So what you want to do then is scroll down and go to this dj.config. So dj.config is data joint's object or part of the config that exposes the configuration of the data joint. So if you just hit this, uh, it exposes some information. These are the configurations of the data joint. And most importantly, there are a lot of things in here, but most importantly, the ones you want to focus on is the database.host, database.user, and database.password. You can probably imagine these are the host address of the database, so the database server you want to connect to, which is already pre-filled. If you look at it, it should already say workshop-db.datajoint.io. That's the address of the database that I already pre-filled for you. But the database.user and database.passwords are blank. It says none. So these are the information you have to provide to be able to connect to the database. And this is precisely the information you'll find in the email that you should have received. Okay. So what you have to do is, you know, you can go to the next one, and you want to put your username and password and put it into the database.user and database.password field, respectively. So here I'll go ahead and put mine in. I think I'm going to end up exposing my password as a result. So you probably received some, like, fairly lengthy encrypted password. Something that might look like this. Okay, so once you set it, you can run dj.config again to make sure that it was entered. Now the dj.config contains your user and password. And once you're there, let me actually just go back a bit. Once you're done with the process, now you're ready to connect to the database. So usually if you start using database and whenever it needs to connect, it will just go ahead and automatically connect it. But once in a while, you can explicitly connect, especially like cases like this where you want to make sure things are working. You can run dj.con, which explicitly connects to the database. So here, I have successfully connected. Uh, if you get a huge bunch of red errors, then there's something going on with your connection. Let me recap again. So I put in the config. I just you know, check the config again to make sure that it's in there. Right? And then you go dj.con. And you should see it says connecting and connection. And like, as long as you don't get a bunch of red errors, you are connected. OK, so one thing, though, is like, with, if you don't do anything else, now if I start a new notebook and if I import data joint, I have to go through the same procedure all over again. Now, you could do that. You can always say DJ config, database.user equals you know, your username and data joint password equals your password. It could be very cumbersome. You lot of don't have to do this all the time. So of course, we cater towards that. There's a way to save your configuration. And you can basically, there's a couple options, but the best and usually the most common way is to save it into a local configuration file, which will be called uh, djlocalconfig.json. It's a JSON object that stores your configuration information. And whenever that file is present locally, next time you import data join, it detects it and gets the configuration out of it so you don't have to manually configure it. So let's save it. You just have to run this cell. I mean, nothing really fancy happens. It just saves it. OK? Now, before concluding this you know, zero session, I want to do one more thing, which is to change the password. Because like, the password you get is fairly cryptic. Uh, it's pretty secure, but it's fairly cryptic. And if you're like me, you wouldn't be able to remember it. So you probably want to change it to something that's you know, still hopefully secure enough, but more memorable. So to do that, you can use this convenient function called dj.setPassword. So go ahead and run it. It prompts you for your new password. Uh, it's sensitive enough, it wouldn't really show it. So I can safely type my new password in. It asks you to confirm a password just like any proper password changer should. And it says passwords updated. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, 
you change a password, but one thing that's now different is that you save your configuration earlier with the save local with the old password. So before you move on, you actually wanna make sure you config, put the config to the updated password and save it over again so the local config is updated. Okay, so this is where I end up exposing my password anyway. All right, yeah. This is your chance to like steal my identity. Uh, you set the password and I basically do two steps at once. I save, I, I put the new password in and go ahead and save it. Okay, so I run it. Now the local config is safe. Uh, my browser insists on remembering my password. Okay, so far so good, no errors. Now this is the moment of truth. We're gonna make sure that everything is actually properly configured. So in order to do that, I want to like, you know, import data join afresh and just without configuring, see if it can connect. Uh, but at the moment, data join is completely configured. You already went through the whole process. So what I want you to do is go up and restart the kernel. If you click on this, you know, recycle button, it prompts like, oh, I'm restarting the kernel. Are you sure? Go ahead, restart the kernel. It gets restarted. And without going through any of the rest of the notebook, just go to this very cell and run it. If it successfully works, what it means is that it went, found your local configuration file, loaded it, and connected to the database, and you have successfully completed the session zero. All right, so did everyone successfully complete session zero? Yes? Too easy? <laughs> All right, so as I insisted at the very beginning, I'd really like to keep this as interactive and you know, as possible. So at any point you have issues or actually comments or questions, just you know, feel free to bring it up. All right, yeah? So to the configuration that you said was being ordered, load that by default? Yeah. Did you see it on the configuration, or is that Ah, uh, yes, so that's a, that's a great question. I almost feel like I planted that question. If you actually go to, so hopefully what happened is that you probably still have a tab open that shows your folder like this, yeah? If you scroll, or even if that scroll, if you actually look at, there's, there's this file dj underscore local underscore conf dot json. You can actually click on it and it will happily expose every information you have. Uh, so you now get to confirm that indeed my password is Edgar. Right, so you can see all the information there. It is the very presence of this file locally that the data join detects, loads the configuration for, and use it in connecting to the database. Okay, did I answer your question? All right. All right, any other questions before we move on? All right, I think technically speaking on my like, uh, you know, like, uh, syllabus today, I said there will be a break after this, but I think we just had a break, so I'd like to move on. Everyone's cool with that? Okay, so if you go back to the work folder, so you're, free, you can, you're more than welcome to close the other tabs. Um, it actually keeps it running anyway, but you can close it. If you really want, you can even shut it down. Like it, there's a couple ways to shut it down. You can go and you say file, and then you can close and halt. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to. Or if in this window, you can actually select and say shut down if you must. I'll keep it running. Uh, one thing I did want to cover before I delve further into the meat of the workshop is the, the notebooks and the constitution of the notebooks. So for the next uh, three to four sessions, actually well, these three sessions, if you look carefully, what you notice is that there are notebooks like 01 getting started with data join, 02 imported, 03 design, blah, blah, blah. There's also this completed copy of it. What this is is basically, as you can imagine, a completed version of the notebook. The one that doesn't say completed actually will have a couple places that are missing code for you to fill out, you know, just to get, like, just so you get a hands-on exercises and coding stuff up. Uh, but the completed actually has everything filled up. And I ran it quite a few times to make sure it should run. So at any point, if you feel like you kind of lost track or maybe you ha you're coming in a bit late, uh, uh, if you want to feel like you have to catch up or just want to see what the answer ought to be, you're more than welcome to open that notebook and see what's the corresponding answer. Now, that being said, I do strongly recommend that you try not to just use that. It becomes a pretty boring exercise for you to keep on hitting shift enter, shift enter through the notebook if that's all you do today at the workshop. Uh, I really hope that you get to interactively type stuff in, like learn how to actually use data join to build pipelines because that's the really exciting part. Uh, but as I said, just for your reference, I have provided this completed version. So 
If you have any issues, go reference that first. If you still have more issues, complain on Slack. If you still e have even more issues, I'll, I'll come and help you. All right, everyone's good to go?